Hi, and thank you for joining me for another short lecture. And friends, today I want to speak to you about Bedikat Hametz, or Bedikat Hametz, how some say, the search of Hametz, or search for Hametz. What is Bedikat Hametz? Well, it's a custom pretty much illustrated yearly by individuals basically tearing their house apart in search for Hametz. I mean, women taking blow torches through their kitchens and disassembling furniture or going book by book all in the search for Hametz. And friends, they go even further than this. Like, they'll line all their counters with aluminum foil or they'll quarter off whole sections of their home, i.e. making everyone's life impossible for at least three weeks, a three-week war on Hametz. And why? Because they're told by their rabbis that this is the halakha. So, is this the case? Well, friends, we'll get back to this. But anyways, friends, you all know that Pesach cleaning pretty much ends with the final ceremony of Bedikat Hametz, when families ceremonially set little pieces of Hametz all over the house and then locate those pieces with a candle, and even some incorporate a feather or even a wooden spoon. This is what has become known as the ceremonial practice of Bedikat Hametz, the ritualized searching for Hametz the night before Pesach. Well, friends, this may come as a shock to you, but what if I told you that according to Halakha and rabbinic Jewish history, what we call today the ceremonial Bedikat Hametz was all they did in their search for Hametz. In other words, all Chazal did in their search for Hametz. That's right, you heard right, friends. In other words, Chazal knew that people would have taken this practice of searching for Hametz way too far, as they do. As a matter of fact, they even said that the search for Hametz was to be done at night. And not just at night, but the night before Pesach. In other words, they clearly stated that the mitzvah of Biyur Hametz, of burning or really just eliminating Hametz, can only be fulfilled on the 14th of Nisan, i.e. the night and day before Pesach, Lechat Chila. And if you think about it, friends, it's really superstition that plays a huge role in why people go so crazy cleaning nowadays. Huh. Perhaps they should have checked what the actual law was. In other words, in terms of halakha, they get no points for the crazy obsessive cleaning that occurs before the 14th of Nisan. But regardless, friends, the halakha is only to find crumbs the size of an olive or larger, which is why Chazal stated that it was to be done at night with the candle. Not to mention any inedible piece of chametz at least an edible for a dog, didn't count, and any moldy or overly dirty piece either, which suddenly makes this whole holiday not as scary and nightmarish as it's typically viewed throughout the years. And this is actually why the whole process of Petikat Hametz, which like we said was only to be done the night before Pesach, would include the nullification of any piece of Hametz you may have missed, again, larger than an olive size, which would make sense because you only had a few hours to search. Why? Because you were only required to locate as much chametz that could be found on the night and half day before Pesach. And that's pretty much it. And if you wanted to freshen up on these halachot, you can find them in Chilchot Chametz Matzah in the Mishneh Torah, Perech, Bet, and Gimel. But anyways, friends, you're probably asking, if this is the halakha, what the heck has happened to Judaism? I mean, if anything has kept people away from the most meaningful religion in the world, then women and men tearing their house into little pieces looking for a Cheerio. And when someone asks them, what are they doing? Their response is, this is Judaism, like it or not. Well, friends, it's not. I mean, this has occurred because we have put down our source text and have given the reins over to rabbis who are just trying to ascetically outdo themselves. Not to mention that according to halakha, an olive size or a kazayat is actually bigger than a normal olive. It's actually one third the size of an egg. And some even hold that it's much larger than that. So how is Bedikat Hametz actually performed? Well, the search begins after sundown on the day before Pesach. And uh, Halakha mentions to use a candle, but a flashlight works just as well. Now, one only has to search areas where Hametz was known to frequent. So no, no very hard to reach places that are, again, impossible to reach. And again, you're only looking for a halachic olive size crumb of chametz, and everything else could pretty much be ignored. And this is really something that everyone in the house should be involved with. As a matter of fact, this is one of the reasons why Chazal said it should be done at night also, because that's the time when everyone is home. Now, on the morning of the next day, typically before noon, you really should check the time because it really does fluctuate. We recite the bracha 
for eliminating our chametz, which is Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kedishanu B'Mitzvotah Betzivanu Al Biur Chametz, which is Blessed be you, Hashem, our King, God of the Universe, who has sanctified us by His commandments and has commanded us concerning the removal or burning of chametz. Now. You don't necessarily have to burn the chametz, but it must be destroyed. In other words, you could throw it in a river or the ocean or bury them or just cover them with dirt. In other words, anything that makes them unedible. Now, in this lecture, I haven't mentioned the koshering of pots, which also must be done before Pesach, if at least your pots are porous in any way. Now, steel pots, you don't have to kosher, and some have even included all types of metal pots, but just clean them very well. And this goes also for glass. But any earthenware or plastic dishes that you used for chametz during the year cannot be kosher and must not be used during Pesach. And this is why it's typically easier to use disposable plates and utensils for that week, or like we said, glass or stainless steel. But if you're going to be hosting people for your meals, you should really see what the custom is in your area. So friends, please have a kosher and meaningful Pesach. And for more information on everything Jewish, please visit TorahJudaism.org. Thank you.